Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. Today we are still in chapter 5 and we are looking at the next topic of that, that is test monitoring and control. Generally when you talk about this topic, we have already been done with discussing on the same at chapter 1, where we have already explored more about what exactly test monitoring and control, but we'll be talking something in more detail about the same in some the better way. So let's get started with the same thing. Where generally when we uh, have understood in the chapter one, the very first tutorial about the test process, we were talking about the test monitoring as well, which is generally a measure of the progress on the project. So it's a process where you generally define certain matrices, which helps you the monitoring process and helps you to measure the progress on the project. So that uh, generally allows a test manager to take necessary action at any point of time during the execution time. So as it, the project executes, uh, we have certain parameters to be monitored, which would help us to determine that what additional efforts are required to be added to be on time delivering, as well as any special uh, steps to be taken to be on the schedule. Because sometimes it happens that you have certain deviations from the plan, and that would lead into the failure to deliver on time or maybe not meeting the criteria like coverage, residual risk, number of defects and so on. So monitoring really plays a vital role from the point of making sure that, that we are delivering something right and on time. So similarly, as I'm talking about the test matrix, generally the test matrix are some type of calculations and formulae which help you to measure one or the other entity across the testing process. And here, if you can have a look, we have got certain examples for the test matrices to help you down with the understanding that how a matrix can allow you to measure an entity in the testing world. So generally, we have five major primary dimensions which can be measured with help of matrices. That is risk, test, defect, coverage, and confidence. Other than this, there are processes which can be measured with help of matrices. But here, we are not talking about these details at this point of time. But this is just for your information to help you more understand that what can be measured. But here, just the examples are given to you that what could be the matrices sample example, which will just give you an understanding that how a matrix can help you to measure an entity. For example, percentage of plaque work done in the test case preparation, percentage of planned work done in test environment preparation. So generally, these are measured as number of hours allocated and number of hours utilized. Test case execution is a measure of how many test cases have been so far executed and what was the plan execution rate. Defect information, if you want, you can also measure that how many information were supposed to be entered while creating a defect report and, of course, how many informations are logged before we can generally use it. The test coverage of requirements, user stories, acceptance criteria, risk or code, task completion, cost of testing. Like this, there are many other test matrices which can be used throughout the process for measuring the any dimension of the testing. The next thing is about the test control. When generally when you talk about the test control process, it is uh, to determine some of the corrective actions or guiding necessary actions which would help you to overcome the deviation from the plan. Now, for each planned activity, we certainly define certain control actions because you never know if your plan can get deviated in future. Because plan is something which is done in much advance than the execution comes into picture. So we are just having a backup step created for us that if in case you experience a deviation from the plan, plan schedule or any such steps which, you would, uh, which would lead to the failure of the project or something, you can really go with that implement test control action that will be only monitored with help of matrices. So here are again some sample examples of the test control activities, which would be you know, another template to understand that what test control actions are and how that can help you to overcome the deviations. For example, reprioritizing test when an identified risk occurs. So you would have already created test cases and prioritized them, but you have also identified certain risk in that area. And if that risk really happens, then of course, the next action would be to reprioritize the test to accommodate that risk. Changing the test schedule due to availability or unavailability of a test environment or other resources. Reevaluating whether a test item meets an entry criteria or exit criteria due to rework. Generally, when you rework on a particular module, we need to make sure that the exit or entry criteria is still met or not. So all together, test control is about making sure that you have an alternative plan or alternative action to be taken if it seems to be getting deviated from the plan. 
At last, in this particular section, we generally talk about the test reports, uh, and we are talking about two different reports which can be generated throughout the test process, and that is like the test progress report and test summary report. So generally, to say that that these two reports are created at a different point of time in the into the process, but generally has all the fields which are common to them. For example, when you talk about the test progress reports. It, these are generated during the execution to track and monitor that what are the major ongoing activities on certain interval of time, maybe after the phase, maybe after the particular stage, or maybe at a desired interval like on daily basis, weekly basis, or something like that. But generally, it will help you to measure that what is the progress on the test execution. So the test progress report would generally include like how many test cases have been executed so far, what is the coverage achieved, are there any deviations, or the defects, or the test case execution, or how many test cases have passed, how many test cases have failed, and many other things like that. And this will be measured throughout the execution lifecycle. But when it comes to test summary report, it is generally in, prepared by the test manager at the end of the exit criteria. So once you meet the exit criteria, you come to the test completion phase. and there you write a test summary report which is the overview of all the major activities conducted towards achieving the goal of testing and in test summary report you will determine the overall steps considered throughout the testing life cycle that what we have done and how did we achieve the target of testing which we determined initially while starting the test process so some of the quick legends are given to you that what could be included the best in these reports like summary of testing performed information on what occurred during a test period deviation from plan if any status of testing and product quality with respect to exit criteria or definition of done factors that have blocked or continue to block the progress matrix of defects test cases coverage activity progress and resource consumption residual risk reusable test work products if produced so Generally, these are the legends which we include as a part of the test progress or test summary report. But only difference is that test progress will be an ongoing activity throughout the execution phase, and test summary will be an overall report once the testing completes. So, team, that's all from here. Just to make you understand that what exactly the test monitoring and control section includes from the point of understanding. So, if you have anything else beyond this, you are free to ask me any type of questions by commenting below. I can help you better to understand the same in more detail. follow that if you have not subscribed to the channel please feel free to subscribe to the channel which will give you the idea that what exactly we are looking at and how we are coming up with the new tutorials we still have lot many topics to go so stay tuned for that till then keep learning keep exploring and understand the context behind the certification exam thanks for watching the video team happy learning